Hello everyone. Um, today we are going to discuss the common base BJD amplifier using NPN transistor. So let us see the circuit diagram. So in a common base amplifier, one distinct feature is that the input is applied to the collector terminal via the coupling capacitor. So this is coupling capacitor CC1. By mistake, it is written CC2. It is capacitor CC1. And the output is taken from the emitter terminal, uh, which is via coupling capacitor CC2 over here. So that's the output with respect to ground. It is measured. And uh, the configuration is a voltage divider configuration. Uh, but at the base terminal, we have a base cap uh, the blocking capacitor, which is called as CB so that it will block any dc value uh, to the it will bypass the dc value to the it will keep the dc value at the base terminal and it will bypass any unwanted ac signal to the ground so that is cb value over here which is, should be the highest as compared to cc1 and cc2 and the circuit is powered with a 20 volt dc su uh, supply with a beta value of transistor as 100 okay now let us analyze this further we have to determine the voltage gain for this amplifier, common base amplifier. So for the DC analysis, uh, it, it, it said that uh, we have to open circuit all the capacitors. So when we open circuit all the capacitors, we'll get this. So this is a simple voltage divider network. And we apply the Tevelos equivalent at the base terminal. So we get RTH and VTH over here at the base uh, side of the transistor. So over here, VTH is given by R2 upon R1 plus R2 into VCC. R1 and R2 values are known and VCC is also known. So if we can work out in a calculator, that value will come close to 4 volt. RTH is given by R1 parallel to R2. R1 and R2 and R2 values are given as 40 kilo ohms and 10 kilo ohms. So RTH will be R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is equal to 8 kilo ohms. So we assume the value of VB on as point. Uh, 7 for the transistor if it is not given and uh, we apply the KVL at the input loop which is uh, VTH minus IB times RTH minus VB minus uh, you know IEQ into RE where IEQ is 1 plus beta times IB so if you work out everything together you will get the value of IBQ as uh, VTH IBQ is equal to numerator will be VTH minus VB on uh, let me expand it yeah so divided by the denominator is RTH plus 1 plus beta times RE. VTH value is 4. VB on is 0.7. RTH is 8 kilo ohm. Beta value is 100. So 1 plus beta will be 101. And RE value is 2 kilo ohm. So if you work out in a calculator, you will get a value nearby about 15.71 micro amperes. Now ICQ will be beta times IBQ which will be 100 times this 15.71 uh, microamperes, which will be 1.71 milliamperes. Now from this parameters, from this DC parameters, we can establish the small signal parameters that is RTH, uh, sorry, R pi. So R pi is given by the formula beta VT upon ICQ, where VT is the thermal voltage. At room temperature, its value is 26 millivolt. So beta that is 100 into 26 millivolt divided by ICQ which is 1.571 milliamperes. If we substitute this value in a calculator, you will get a number as 1.655 kilo ohms. Next is GM. GM is given by the formula ICQ upon VT. Again, the VT value is 26 millivolt and ICQ is 1.57 milliamperes. If you divide that by 26, you will get 60.42 milliampere per volt. So after you get the small signal parameters, now is the time to draw the small signal equivalent circuit. So for the small signal mid, mid frequency equivalent circuit, we assume that all the capacitors behave as a, a short circuit Okay, for mid frequencies. So this is my small signal equivalent circuit. Now the hybrid pi model consists of, uh, you know, R pi connected between the base and the emitter and GM into VPI current source connected between the collector and the emitter. Okay, and at the input side, we have, uh, you know, R1 parallel to R2 over here, let's say, yeah, R1 parallel to R2, and this is connected to the, I mean, the, the, the CB is actually short-circuited at mid frequencies. So directly this will go to the ground. So that makes the R1 parallel to R2 redundant. Uh, 
so we can say that the base terminal is connected to the ground okay at the output side we have rc and input is connected in parallel with uh, as you can see over here uh, in parallel to re now we have to get the expression for v out upon v in we will directly uh, we will not analyze it further we will directly use the formula so av is given by v out upon v in which is the voltage gain which will be given by gm into rc now gm value is 60.42 into 10 is to minus 3 and rc value is 4 kilo ohm so if you work out in a calculator that number will be 241.68 okay so let's simulate this circuit and let's verify this number okay let me go back to the original diagram and uh, let me reduce the size of this and i've already kept the circuit ready for your reference so that uh, we will save them some time let me reduce it amplitude okay so the circuit to your left hand side uh, let me reduce close this yes okay so the circuit to the left hand side and the right hand side are almost the same as you can see over here cb is 100 microfarad r1 and r2 40 and 10k rc is 4 kilo ohm re is 2 kilo ohm cc1 and cc2 are 33 microfarad each and v in we are applied as 10 millivolts peak to peak so here it is 5 volts peak and the supply voltage is uh, let's check the supply voltage it's 20 volts yeah it is 20 volt and uh, the model parameter that is beta how to define it so as soon as you select this uh, npn transistor right click on it by default it will be npn you have to make it as a npn1 now uh, in the spice directive you have to type the following code dot model npn1 npn bf bf stands for beta equal to 100 so click on ok it will appear onto your screen so this means that the transistor which we have used have have taken the value of beta as 100 the rest all the parameters of it are uh, by default okay now we first it's always a good idea to check the uh, you know the let me delete any analysis if it is present okay i i will be deactivating that so let me go over here and deactivate this yeah. so now it's fine so now if i go to simulate and click on run it will ask me the simulation profile always it's a good practice to check the dc conditions first so i'll select dc operating point and click on ok so remember we have labeled everything v in underscore my name i have, under, I have labeled v out underscore my name again capital b capital c capital e this is very helpful for labeling so that we can directly get this guess this voltages from here okay now let's check the dc conditions the value of icq should come out to be 1.57 and we are getting as uh, one point here it is so the value of icq the collector current in the transistor q1 is uh, 1.53 and we are getting theoretically 1.57 that's absolutely fine uh, vb if you see it is 3.87 minus 3.09 uh, it is close to 0.7 volts that's fine and uh, the value of uh, yeah ibq so ibq is 15.3 uh, yeah 15.3 micro amperes and we are here theoretically we are getting 15.71 so all the values are matching quite well okay now let us close this let me deactivate this dot op so right click on dot op and put a semicolon sign it will be colon uh, semicolon sign so it will be deactivated now let me activate this dot run again so this dot run is like for timing analysis so i'll set it to 0 to 5 milliseconds and i'll simulate it i'll get a blank screen right click on it add trace enter your v in see to that only one expression is entered at a time uh, this is my v in 10 millivolt peak to peak and next i'll check the v out okay so this is my v out okay as you can see uh, i mean the v in has become almost very small basically it's disappearing it's not if i divide it into two plane plots and if i pick it up i can see this back so let's see the range over here this is in 5 millivolt and this is in one volt close to one volt okay so now let's check the observation table now 
So for the observation table, I have to reduce this. So we now applied as 10 millivolt peak to peak. Let's check the output peak to peak value. So I left click on on the screen and select the cursor. I left click over here and select another cursor and bring it to the lower peak. So I'm getting around uh, 2.262 uh, volt peak to peak value. So 2.263, uh, 2.262 volt divided by uh, 10 millivolt. If you do, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. So you will get a simulated value as 226.3, and the theoretical value is 241.68. Yeah. For BJT, such difference do come because the BJT doesn't have a very high uh, input impedance. So what are the noticing points to learn about this common base amplifier? The, if you notice carefully, there is no negative sign present over here. That means input and output are in phase with each other. As you can see, they are in phase with each other, almost in phase with each other. So that's the distinct feature of this common base amplifier. There are other features also like input impedance and output impedance. We are not discussing them right now. Also, for common base configuration, the input is applied to the emitter terminal and the output is taken from the collector terminal. So this also is a unique feature. Okay, I hope that uh, this uh, observe this values are you all also should try and you should get near, uh, you know nearby these values. So we have completed the analysis of a common base amplifier using NP and BJT. Next time we'll see some other configuration. So until then, have a good day and thank you.